if you are a subscriber to the Kelly Blue Book YouTube channel, then you'll know that I recently just did a first drive of the fifth generation Kia Sportage, and that I would be doing a deeper dive on stuff like design, the interior, and tech later. Well, now is later. And if you're not a subscriber to the KBB YouTube channel, maybe you should be. Here's the rough overview. The Sportage is Kia's longest lasting nameplate. This newest version comes with three powertrain options. The gas option receives a 2.5 liter naturally aspirated inline four. Estimated EPA numbers are solid even for this option. There are two hybrid options available on the Sportage as well. A standard hybrid that gets a 44 kilowatt permanent magnet motor and more than 500 miles of range per tank of gas. And you can get a plug-in hybrid that comes with a 66.9 kilowatt motor and a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery that can run for up to 32 miles on pure electric range. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about the exterior of the Sportage. So the first thing that you might notice is actually fairly dramatic in that it's bigger. This thing is 7.1 inches longer and it has a 3.4 inch longer wheelbase. Now that is significant too, and we'll get into that a little bit later. So does that put the Sportage into a different segment? I say yes. The subcompact segment is now being occupied by the Soul and the Seltos. That puts the all new Nero and slightly larger Sportage in a compact spot with the Sorento in a smaller midsize space and the Telluride in the larger midsize slot. If you're cross shopping, the Sportage is now gonna line up with the Honda CRV, Toyota RAV4, Nissan Rogue, Volkswagen Tiguan, Subaru Forester, and Ford Escape. Well, that is some stiff competition. So the Kia Sportage now looks a lot more like the rest of the Kia lineup, and there are a couple of reasons for that. The first is this tiger nose grille that kind of appears on a lot of other vehicles that they've got, so that helps. The other thing that really helps is this, what they're calling a boomerang headlight. Now, I really like this because it's kind of a signature look. Meaning when you drive down the street and you see something like this, you go, oh, you kind of know instantly and exactly what it was. The last generation Sportage was a bit blob-like. So this is a massive improvement. Uh, I think Kia did a really great job with the design. But ultimately beauty is in the beholder's eyes. So you tell me, we'll put up a side-by-side -side comparison for reference. See what I mean? Now we're gonna move inside, and there is where that longer wheelbase is gonna make its biggest impact. Magically, there is a ton more room back here. I'm talking headroom, leg room, everything room. And the recline back here is ridiculous. Oh, Kia has made the second row in the Sportage a very comfortable place to sit. And there's more room back here for your stuff. When you get into the driver's seat, you're going to be very pleasantly surprised at how much work he has done with the interior of the Sportage. The cockpit is really driver focused, which is fantastic. But the big news here is big screen. There is 25 inches of screen available from basically the A pillar to over halfway through the cockpit. That's a 12.3 inch digital gauge screen and a 12.3 inch infotainment screen. It's nicely integrated, so looks nothing like an iPad just slapped onto your dash. It's well thought out and looks great. And most importantly, the interface is intuitive as are all Kia products. Some of the tech that's standard includes CarPlay and Android Auto. You can also use Amazon Alexa or Google Assistant to bark commands at it. Below the screen, you'll get climate and audio controls. You can upgrade the audio system and there's an available 360 degree camera, available wireless charging, which is actually standard on all but the base model LX, and a Wi-Fi hotspot. The seats are comfortable. Uh, they're pretty stylish too, even if they're maybe a little bit generic looking, but comfort is the most important thing. Now, you will only get cloth seats on the base LX model. On everything above that, you get this Syntex, which is a synthetic leather that frankly does a great imitation of leather, uh, probably more durable and way less expensive. You'll also get nice detail like stitching. This is real stitching. Again, molded stitching only on the base model. So they're giving you a whole lot 
lot for not a whole lot of extra. Um, the one other thing I'll say is nice padded places for your elbows. Um, very, very comfortable. As a package, the interior lives up to the exterior when it comes to design, even on the lesser priced trims. All right, I got two pretty significant nitpicks um, that really stand out to me. The first is when it comes to volume. Um, you have this little nubbin right here on the steering wheel, which is fine. And you can get a knob here, but it shares duty with climate control and volume. So even if you're driving and you're maybe setting this onto the climate control and you thought you were turning up your volume, it could, it could just be a little bit distracting. So not super great, but okay. The other thing is this. Gosh, I love wireless charging, but why are you gonna give me wireless charging and not give me wireless CarPlay? So I'm still gonna have to have this little extra thing um, and that doesn't make any sense to me. Safety equipment takes a front seat in the Sportage with Kia making some pretty advanced features standard, including lane following assist, lane keeping assist, forward collision avoidance, and a driver attention warning. Optional systems include blind spot monitor and collision avoidance, rear cross traffic avoidance, as well as forward collision avoidance with junction turning so if you're making a left hand turn, the system can avoid a head on collision. You can also get a navigation-based smart cruise control that is available as well. Normally, I would say just use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto um, for navigation. Don't spend the extra money. But I'm gonna say this. This one is actually pretty unique and interesting. So it will use navigation-based software and information to tell you, oh, I've got a turn coming up. And so it will actually slow the car down for you. Um, it won't just slow down when there is only a car in front of you, which incidentally, it does that as well with that stop and go feature. Um, you know, I, I've said this before and I will say it again. Um, the advanced safety driver technologies from Kia and Hyundai are to me some of the best in this segment. They rival some of the luxury premium brands. They're smooth, unobtrusive, excellent. And again, I always say this too, there is no substitute you paying attention while you're driving. So more big news for the Sportage comes with the addition of two trim levels. One is the X-Line and the other is the X-Pro. Yes, Kia is embracing the rugged trend in crossovers and I for one have to say I am not disappointed. The X-Line is more of an appearance package, which is fine, but it doesn't really do anything by way of more capability. You will get an all-wheel drive system that does a good job of sending traction to where you need it most, so that's something. But you will get trim-specific front and rear bumpers, gloss black side mirrors, a roof rack and window surrounds, as well as 19-inch wheels. Yeah, that wheel size alone should tell you it's not super off-road capable. The X-Pro goes a few steps further with 17-inch off-road wheels, BF Goodrich all-terrain tires that give you some great traction. Because of those good tires, the traction control system is set up differently for you, so you can do some more extreme things that you might not be able to do with a lesser tire. That is a great choice, Kia, nicely done. Helping with that capability are extra drive modes, including a snow mode that helps prevent slippage, maximizing traction and downhill braking. So the one that I'm driving right now is the standard hybrid. Um, and yes, I've done a more intensive driving video that's on the KBB YouTube channel, so go and watch that. But I will say a couple of things about how this drives. The first thing is I think the acceleration is exceptional. So it gets 227 horsepower. Um, it does have a little bit of a moment right as you tip in the throttle. Um, selecting the gears or a little bit of turbo lag, perhaps a little bit of both combined. But overall, you really have a great sense of pickup and speed. Um, the other thing that I'm gonna say is the drive modes in uh, the Sportage are very noticeable. So again, if I turn it into sport mode, 
throttle tip in. I mean, you really, really feel the throttle pretty instantly. Um, the other thing that I really like about the Sportage and how it drives is this steering. Um, again, it's all kind of electronically assisted, but I do like the weight of it. Again, I'm in sport mode right now and there's a little bit of weight to the steering wheel. Uh, it feels really good though and very precise in my hands, which is of course always what you want. The brakes as well, um, honestly, very effective, which is what you want from brakes. Overall, driving the Sportage is a really uh, refined and good experience. I will say that I feel like Kia and Hyundai, just like Mazda um, in this segment, are punching way above their class. I really love what they're doing. If you haven't test driven one of them, I would highly suggest getting in it and just seeing for yourself. The Sportage is based on the new Sorento platform, which is a stiffer structure making the Sportage feel more stable even given its increased length. It turns with confidence even in the hybrid when you're giving it an extra punch with that increased horsepower. There is a huge improvement here in the driving dynamics of the Sportage. The base LX starts at just under $26,000 and the all-wheel drive X-Pro Prestige model, which is the top of the line, tops out at just under $37,000. Those prices don't include Kia's $1,255 destination fee. In between those two extremes, you can get the EX, SX, SX Prestige, and the X-Line, as well as the X-Pro and X-Pro Prestige. That is a pretty wide array of options for an $11,000 spread in price. So what have we learned? The Kia Sportage is now bigger. It gets better fuel economy. You have more powertrain options. You get more standard features. It's more capable. It drives better and God, it looks a ton better than its predecessor. Uh, welcome to the big kids table, Sportage. I think we've also learned that if you're not subscribing to the KBB YouTube channel, then you should be.